In this video, we're going to show you how surprisingly simple it is to install a raised bed garden using a water tank that is able to grow a large bounty of delicious vegetables in a fairly small area of your yard. Welcome to Tim's Homework. In this channel, we guide you through the best ways to successfully and professionally complete your homework so that you're able to proudly say to your friends and family, I did this. Come on, let's get this project done so you can enjoy your home. Ever since moving into our home, I've always wanted a garden to grow fresh vegetables. There are no good spaces for a traditional in-ground garden, especially one with full sun throughout the day. The solution to the lack of open space is raised bed gardening. The solution I was most intrigued with was using a livestock watering tank for the raised bed. It's ready-made, you can choose from various sizes, and you can set the garden height depending on what you set it on. I found out there's many benefits to going the raised bed route. The tank is ready-made and being off the ground, it's great for watering because it doesn't dry out as fast. There's less weeds. You don't have to worry so much about animals like rabbits eating your plants. You're able to plant denser, there's more airflow, and the garden has a small footprint, which is important in our case. It's a quick install, and it's easier on you and your body to get it up off the ground. In this first video, we will guide you through installing the raised bed. In the next video, we'll show you how simple it is to install drip irrigation in your raised bed garden. Be sure to stay with us to the end of this video for some important lessons we learned along the way. Grab a cup of coffee and let's jump in. The first step for us was to determine where to place the garden. It needed full sun, access to water, and should be easy to get to. We're looking at two places. One seemed to make the most sense would be to put it down here in this area that's already open. It's kind of out of the way on the other side of the house. The water and everything is off to the right. The light takes a little longer to get to it in the morning, but then it has light the rest of the day. So we end up having to prep the area here. We'll leave the mulch down just for a protective barrier in the bottom, but we'll end up digging in these landscape blocks to give us some footings, put everything up in the air a little bit. And then down with inside here is gonna be some irrigation tubing we'll use to tap into. Well, looks like we uh, got our work cut out for us today. Load one, two, Three, four, I think this is four. Well, that is five trips, last trip. So I think we've come to the conclusion that this is where we want it to sit. We're gonna take out this plug here, which will allow us to run irrigation up through the inside. Now the next step is to get the H&W uh, off of this. Okay, well, we've been able to get off a lot of the paint from the logo. So I got a sticker or two up here and a little more paint to go, but uh, I think it'll be good enough for starting. We'll come back and work on it more later. We're also taking out the plug here so we can end up running the lines through for the drip irrigation. And the way it's set right now, if we uh, run some PVC through there. I can fit half inch PVC through that hole. However, it only leaves us with just a little bit of uh, open space to run some tubing through. So if going up to the three quarter inch pipe that doesn't quite make it so what we're going to do is we're going to use a step drill bit on my handy dandy milwaukee drill anytime we are using any metal work remember definitely got to go for the uh, specs perfect fit I'm gonna clean it up just for a little safety, take and deburr it, and then we'll do the inside as well. Well, we're now about to embark on the holy function. I'm gonna take our Milwaukee drill, the half inch cobalt bit, take a center punch, and just make some Swiss cheese out of the bottom of this. I'll show you how it's done. Pick a spot about right here. Just can put the bit right in that spot. And go. Try 
try another one. No particular place. Looks like Swiss cheese. Yep. So essentially they can be really random. Just kind of make it looking like Swiss cheese. And there was one note in the uh, one of the articles I read that said, make sure you remember that if you do put holes in the bottom of it, you'll no longer be able to use it for watering your animals. If uh, we need to put that disclaimer in here for you, you may be with the wrong channel. Okay, one thing I noticed as I'm cleaning up here, is drilling it left a lot of these sharp burrs and they uh they're pretty sharp so since we're going to do it right we're going to take a countersink and use that to deburr these in case just somehow some late time later somebody ends up putting their finger on it As you can see now they're smooth to the touch that's safe The next thing we're going to do is put some of this quarter inch hard cloth in there. This will actually go on the inside, but we're going to use the outside as a pattern to cut it. Coincidentally, it's virtually the right length. Anyway, we'll get the grinder out and let her rip. Ready for some fireworks? Okay, now we're going to put in the hard cloth, see if it fits. Looks like it's in there just perfectly. Next step is we'll end up digging out to put the blocks in for the foundation and we're ready to go. Well, let's get started. we got to get this uh, thing raised up on those blocks and we'll start getting it all filled up. We made a quick outline so we can see exactly where we want to bring all the mulch out from underneath and then we want to locate all these tubes that would have been for irrigation drip irrigation of any of these plants that were here ahead of time and we'll actually tie into one of those tubes for the garden oh well, got the tubing out of the way next step is to start digging out some of this uh, mulch here we're now down to the bare ground this is a landscape fabric underneath everything so we'll set the stones in there this block and then we'll see if we gotta level them up a little bit. After a little bit of shoveling and dirt, and a little rock here and there, we're getting everything so it's on nice and level. Both side to side, as well as front to back. This will help with not only in drainage, but also so it looks nice out here. We've got the tall trellis on it. it really is gonna accentuate if it's off beat a little bit. We've got kind of everything in place. So this is just a mock-up of how she'll sit. Nice and sturdy. Got the conduit down there in the bottom. We'll end up running the irrigation tubing through that. Okay, now we'll end up cutting the conduit to give us the perfect pipe length to run our irrigation up to the top here. For measuring tape, we'll just set this across. We end up putting the conduit in the pipe. And then right where that comes across the bottom, that's where we'll end up cutting it. Okay, we're just about through. A little dab of PVC cement. Put it on and twist. So we've got the conduit in there, just hanging loose right now. We'll get that all solidified when we put the rock and everything in. Need to, again, just make sure the uh, screen is in there. And as we put rock in, we'll get that all down flat. Next step is to start the fun part. Let's start filling her up. And this will end up giving us a couple inches of drainage at the bottom. Just put a little bit in each end. 
just to kind of hold down that screen, make sure everything fits good. For this layer here, we're using just river pebbles from Home Depot. Could use any rock you have. This is just the simplest and one of the most economical they had. A couple more bags. Now that we have some rock down there to kind of hold everything in place, it's time to cut down our cattle fence to the right height for our trellis. And then we'll just start filling in the rock and dirt around it and hold it right in place. We're going to shoot for trellis about that high. When you go to cut it, you basically have two easy choices. You can use a bolt cutter, or if you have one, the old trusty right angle grinder. Let's put we have a nice even layer of rock all the way across the bottom that's holding in the uh, cattle fence. And then we'll end up coming in with landscape fabric. We'll cut it to fit, keep all the sediment from washing through. Cut one swath of this, we'll put it in there, see how it fits. We can tuck it around and then cut some more. We we'll end up coming in here, slicing right along the uh, so you can tuck this right back behind and the rocks will put it in place. Okay, we got all the landscape fabric in there, tucked in there neat down the sides, kind of like tucking in your shirt, the rocks hold everything in. This is now the place where if you wanted to use some of the hill culture where you stack up some old rotted logs and branches and stuff like that or maybe some old moldy hay in the bottom it would take up a lot of space so you don't need quite as much dirt. We're actually going to skip that but this would be a good time to do that. So as we want to fill this puppy up we end up taking and making a mix of garden soil like some potting soil or perlite and some compost um, which is actually quite a bit as common or we want to basically break it up since it's a raised bed or almost like a container grown. If you just use plain old soil, it'll end up getting too thick and heavy and turn into like concrete. So we'll mix a couple parts of each bag together in our trusty wheelbarrow and start filling her up. Here being able to see there's a good mix between that light brown, almost mossy, the darker brown of the soil. There we go, first load in. In addition to the Miracle Gold garden soil for in ground use, we're adding the potting soil mix. Then we're adding in some actual uh, Miracle Grow real good compost. Do about half of that with a half of this common order compost. And then, top two layers, I'll end up throwing in some of this perlite, which just again spreads out the uh, soil so it allows the drainage a lot better. Look how nice and black that compost is. Let me see a little vermiculite. We're gonna get this all mixed back in. Well, here we are, down to what looks like the absolutely perfect height. Just the right amount of soil and one full bag left. Challenge is, once we start watering this, it's gonna sink in and settle out. So we're probably gonna have to crack into the last bag. So now we're going to start getting ready to plant some plants. We're going to try and throw in here as much of a mixed garden as we can. Um, we're pushing the space a little bit. We'll see how that works this year and kind of go from there. If you're getting value, please like this video and hit subscribe for future videos guiding you through successfully completing projects around your home. Here are five quick points I learned while going through this process. Number one, I wanted it taller because I thought it would look better but we easily could have gone with a shorter, less expensive tank and saved quite a bit on the quantity of soil needed. Number two, the logo painted on the side of the tank did not come off as easily or as completely as I thought it would. So it may be worth checking out a tank that does not have a logo painted on the side. Number three, as you saw in the video, unlike drilling through thicker metal, we didn't need to center punch before drilling the drainage holes. Number four, 
To my surprise, the bolt cutter worked much faster and easier than the grinder for cutting the cattle fence. And most importantly, number five, I rushed ahead with planting before getting the irrigation in. And as you'll see in the next video, with as quick and easy as it is to install the irrigation, I should have gotten it in at the beginning of the season. There we have it for the first video in this series. Stick around for video two, which is gonna show you how incredibly easy it is to put an automated drip irrigation system in your raised bed planting. We'll see you next time. First step for us is to turn. Well, there we have it. Video one. There we have it. Video one, check out the list. Stick around.